Hi guys, I'm back. And today we are going to do a sink strainer pour, but we're gonna do it a little differently. We're gonna do it on the spinner so that we don't have to tilt and hopefully our pattern will stay cool. I have already wet down the canvas with some white paint. Um, I'm hoping that little ridges made by my paintbrush will not interfere. Um, we're not using any white today. We're going to use uh, all Artist Loft colors today. We've got Artist Loft Light Violet, Brilliant Magenta, Phthalo Green, Green Yellow, Light Blue, Deep Magenta, and of course Phthalo Blue because Phthalo Blue is awesome. <laughs> All right, and so I'm just going to layer the paint in the cups. I'm trying to decide which color to sort of start with. I think we're going to go with this deep magenta to begin with. And I'm going to try and layer them really easy in the cups. Oh, uh, yeah, let's do some phthalo blue. I don't want them mixing a lot. And I think probably this this whole cup worth ought to be enough paint for the pattern for this entire canvas. This canvas is a 12 inch by 12 inch. I know I was doing a lot of 8 inch canvases, but that's because they're super cute and I love them. And they, they just work really well if you want to get a really cool cell pattern. I don't know, the smaller the canvas, the better they work sometimes. Not always, of course, but you can get a cooler pattern. Okay, let's go with some of... I kind of want to switch the pattern up a little bit. I don't want it to be exactly the same. So we'll do... Um, let's do some phthalo blue. And how about some... We need a lighter color. We'll do the deep magenta and some light blue. Some phthalo green. Some of this bright magenta, brilliant magenta, I think it is. Light violet. I think we need some more green. Green yellow, I believe this is. This cup's feeling pretty heavy. This is probably plenty of paint, so I think we're gonna go with that. Just gonna kind of pinch my cup a little bit because we kind of want a pour spout here. Now I'm gonna try and pour this in here whilst spinning the canvas. Now probably should do that with the left side though. <laughs> now, if I start paying attention to moving this stick, this is probably going to go off this direction. So I've got to be really careful and pay attention to what I'm doing here. So wish me luck. We're just going to start spinning it. I hope I've got enough paint in this cup. I'm starting to think maybe I don't. Maybe I need more. Hopefully the centrifugal force will spread it out a good bit. Oh, well, we may have to add some more paint. Because that is about it. Look at the cup while that's spinning. Isn't that pretty? I don't know if y'all can see that, but it looks pretty cool. So you're going just a little faster. I did not think about the corners overhanging the table. 
So I'm hoping all this paint's not going to end up everywhere. Because once it starts flying off of this corner here. I just wanted to get off those corners. I don't want to have to tilt it at all. Okay. I think we're going to leave it at that. It's very dark. Way darker than I thought it was going to be. I'm just going to let it stop spinning on its own. And yes, I can see that the colors are blended an awful lot. All right, this side looks cool, but that side looks really boring. So I don't know where to go from there. We're going to pick this up and see if we cannot drip it. That's cool, but that right there is really not. I'm not really sure. We could like get a syringe and suck it up. I'm going to put my little sink strainer in the sink. Or in the bucket there. Wipe right off my hand. Um, um, um. Well, the pattern is intact. That's one cool thing. Um, we can kind of take a palette knife and just sort of, uh, because it's so, We might could just take like a, uh, sorry, I was thinking, a toothpick and kind of drag that through and it should kind of make that pattern not obvious that we've dragged paint off. Okay, that's pretty much it for that. I really don't know what to do about the center. So while I'm thinking, I'm gonna fix the corners here. This really turned out, it would have been cool if, this, if the whole thing was like this. I'm a little disappointed. But, Trying to fix these edges so the white will go off. I don't want any of that white showing. That was just to keep the, the thing wet. Really need to kind of scrape that off right there and then maybe drag into the center. That would help. And I'm not sure how to do that. Well, I guess we could try to use the uh, palette knife a little bit to sort of scrape some of that color off. Maybe. I don't want those really super bright colors interfering with that pattern we have right there. I think I need, no, the other pellet knife's a little too big. This could be completely destroying the inside of this painting, but who knows. I want to get all the excess off that I can without damaging the pattern. And then kind of bring it in, hopefully. A lot of paint right there in the center. Okay, I'm going to put this on pause while I continue to pull a little bit of that paint out of the center. I'll be right back. Okay, so I scraped up a little bit more out of the center and then sort of ran the, put my toothpick in some pink and kind of ran it around in a circle. Um, so 
think we're going to torch it, get the air bubbles out. You can see, kind of see where all the air bubbles are popping. They're kind of creating uh, cells. I like the cells that it creates when the air bubbles pop. Even though we did put silicone in, so obviously we weren't wanting to have cells. I still like it. It kind of makes, to me, it looks like it's kind of outer spacey. Well, I think if I was going to hang it, maybe I think the darker needs to be on the bottom. It looks kind of cool. I don't like the center, of course. So I'm not really sure what to do about that other than leave it alone. Um, what I was thinking about might look kind of cool is if we did like a little tiny pour. A little um, pour with some silicone to create some cells in the center there, but I'm afraid it's going to overrun this, this, these pretty little petals in the middle, and they look kind of cool. So I don't want to destroy those. Not really sure why it's so blended up here, and then this is not. It looks they look like peacock feathers down here. It looks kind of cool. So I think we're gonna leave it alone. For the moment, I'll probably turn the camera off and stare at it for a few minutes, um, and I'll probably end up playing with the inside. I might just, you know, make that a solid, more of a solid pink. I don't know. So, but like I said, for now, we're going to leave it alone. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that center. That's the problem with these sink strainer pores. I don't really know. The center is hard to deal with. So, I think we'll leave it alone. I'm sorry, I think my light is kind of blocking. I've got these, these wood ornaments that I've made that I've turned on my lathe, and they're kind of sitting in front of the light. Let me see if I can adjust that a little better. So where they're not really... You can just kind of see them all wiggling around as I'm... as I'm bumping them. Because my light won't stay up real well. There we go. All right, I think that's a little better. So let's get you down so you can see a little close up. So here's the bottom. You can see the pattern, how it went out from the center. That's pretty cool. They all went out pretty straight. Look at that. It's almost, I don't know. Kind of like, it kind of looks like alcohol ink a little bit, where it's all kind of blended together. I like that area right there. It's pretty. I wish the whole thing looked like that. And you see all oh, where all those air bubbles were, they popped. Gave it kind of a neat. And of course, this is the top that's kind of, kind of boring. But I don't know. It kind of gives it a sort of a delicate juxtaposition to the other side. Oh, it's starting to rain really hard outside, so you can you might be able to hear my wind chime in the background. The wind is blowing, the rain is pouring down. Look at the way the colors are blended down there. Oh, they're so pretty when they blend like that. Very watercolory. Whoops. I'm going to take you in towards the center there. If we could stop right there, that would look cool, but unfortunately, the center is bleh. Well, let's take you back out to where it's prettier. There we go. That's a little better. Very cool. Okay. Okay, well, there's your pretty for today. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I love the spinner. It's pretty fun. So we may have to do another pour on the spinner. Maybe we'll just do a, um, like a flip cup on the spinner and let it take its own journey instead of doing all that tilting. Um, I'd love to do this on a, 
on a circular canvas, but I, I don't know. I don't like the way the canvases, the circular canvases are stapled on the sides. They're kind of lumpy. Um, and I, I would like to do it on a, on a wood circle, but the wood circles are, you know, they cost five times as much as the canvases do. So <laughs> we may not be doing a wood circle anytime soon unless I can find one um, on clearance somewhere. Or, I don't know. Maybe I'll cut one myself. Okay, well, there's your pretty for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to thank all my subscribers and all my viewers. Um, if you guys aren't subscribers yet, um, you know, just click on the subscribe button. You don't always have to watch my video, but um, I think we do some kind of neat stuff around here. So if you don't like something we do one day, maybe the next time you'll like it because we kind of switch around between painting and resin, a um, little bit of alcohol ink. Uh, some mixed media art so kind of like to do a little bit of everything um, I want to thank all of you who have uh, donated to my channel recently um, I really really appreciate it um, it allows me to continue to make these videos for you guys and and hopefully we're all having fun and maybe you're learning a little something I know I'm still learning from a lot of the other artists um, yeah, so thank you very, very much for your donations. If any of you want to donate to my channel, the PayPal link is below. It's really super simple. Um, takes you like 30 seconds to create a PayPal account, and then you can send send money that way. Um, so like if you like a painting that I create and you want to purchase it, you can just pay me through PayPal. It's really simple. Um, so don't be afraid of... <laughs> Um, I've had a few comments lately, um, people are afraid to use the PayPal link because it's all computerized, but trust me, it works fantastic. It's a really super easy way to pay for everything. I mean, you can buy stuff on Amazon or, you know, wherever with it. So, look into it. Um, subscribe to my channel if you're not a subscriber. I'd love to have you. Um, share my links, if you will, and um, watch the ads. That's one of the most important things you can do to help me out with my channel is watch those ads. If you watch them through to completion, I get some revenue from that. And my ad revenue um, is going to pay for my house. Um, long story short, we, um, we need to get our house paid for so that we don't lose our house. So every painting that you purchase, every, um, every time you, you watch an ad, you guys are helping me and my family out tremendously. So... I greatly, greatly appreciate you guys for that. Um, I hope wherever you are on the planet, you have an awesome afternoon, day, evening, or night. See you later. Bye.